In the last video, we have learned about how to differentiate soluble and insoluble salts and today, we're going to learn how to prepare those kind of salts. As we mentioned, we have two kinds of salts, we're going to start with soluble salt. First thing first, we're going to see whether the salt contains spar or it does not contain spar. If indeed it contains spar, then we're going to carry out the process of neutralization by the method of titrations. So how I remember is by using SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants tells us that if the salt contains spar, which is sodium, potassium, or ammonium, then we're going to carry out the process of neutralization by using titrations. So how it works is we're going to decide what kind of acid alkaline to prepare the salt, and then the water is the byproduct. The setup of the titration will look something like this where we have alkaline sitting inside the conical flux and we're going to drop in the acid bit by bit. So most of the times, acid is inside the burette instead of alkaline is because if you use alkaline, alkaline will react with the wall of the burette. And if the salt does not contain spar, then we're going to use the method of mixing the acid with metal, metal oxide, or metal carbonate. How I remember for this one is my only children does not go to spa or I can think of like we Malaysian go through the period of MCO during the MCO period we cannot go to spa so either metal metal carbonate or metal oxide or getting off like just like my only children does not go to spa the difference is just the byproduct. Let's say if I use metal, I have the hydrogen gas as the byproduct. If I use metal oxide, I will get water as the byproduct. And if I use metal carbonate, I will get water and carbon dioxide as the byproduct. So how it works is I have a stand and then I go to fill up the beaker with acid first. And then we go to heat it up. When it's hot enough, I'm going to add in slowly by using a spatula those kind of metal, metal oxide or metal carbonate. And next, for insoluble salt, you can think of insoluble salt are eventually contained in soluble, two words. So I will use a double decomposition method or sometimes known as precipitation method. How it works is, it's going to use two different kind of soluble salt based on what kind of salt you want to prepare and we're going to mix it up once you mix it up and stir it by using a glass rod, what you will see is precipitate is formed. This precipitate is what we want. That is the insoluble salt. But the byproduct is one of the soluble salt. So what we're going to do is try to use mnemonics to remember all the procedures step by step. So for soluble salt that contains spa, I will say this HCF really, really difficult. HCF is just the mathematics questions. So this HCF is really difficult. For the one that does not contain spa, just like my only children does not go to spa, we use the method of my friend. HCF is really difficult. For insoluble salt, which is by using the method of double decomposition, I can think of like, you know, decompose. Means the thing is already decomposed for twice, it's really disgusting. So if we say, my friend is really disgusting. MFRD. What you can see is, Eventually, the back is the same, HCF very really difficult. The one different for soluble, remember, SpongeBob SquarePants, so titrations. And then for the one that does not go to spa, my only children, same as my friend, they don't go to spa. And then double decompose is my friend, very really disgusting. So first, start with the soluble salt that contains spa. This HCF very really difficult means we're going to carry out titrations heat it up, cool it down, filter, rinse it, and dry it. So titration looks like this, as we know. So first, we have the alkaline in the conical flux. So alkaline contains hydroxide ion, and we have the acid in the burette, and acid contains hydrogen ion. And what materials will be best on what kind of salt that you want to prepare? Let's say if you want to prepare a table salt, which is the sodium chloride, so sodium chloride contains sodium ion and chloride ion. Once I fill in the blank, then I will have sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric as our materials. What if now I want to prepare potassium nitrate? So potassium nitrate contains potassium ion and nitrate ion. So if I fill in the blank, then I will have potassium hydroxide and 
nitric acid. So now you're going to try by yourself, what if you want to prepare ammonium sulfate? Ammonium sulfate contains ammonium cation and sulfate anion. Once I fill the blank up, I will have ammonium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Once we've done the titrations, we're going to take the mixtures, we're going to heat it up because why? Remember, we have the water as the byproduct. So what we're going to do is, we're going to heat it up to remove all the water first so that it becomes saturated. So once it becomes saturated, we let it cool down to room temperatures. Once it cools down, it will form crystal. After that, we're going to filter out the impurity by using filtrations and rinse it with the distilled water. Since now it's wet, what we're going to do is, we're going to dry it by pressing against the filter paper. So now we have learned the procedure step by step, but how I write down in the sentence. So for titrations, what we remember is the setup looks like this. So first, we're going to prepare the alkaline first. So for alkaline, we're going to use a pipette. So we're going to rinse the pipette with the alkaline, and then use the pipette to transfer the alkaline from the bottle to the conical flux. But for the first time, we're going to use the indicators. What kind of indicator is based on you? For me, I use the phenolphthalein. And then we're going to prepare our acid. So the acid is inside the burette. So we're going to rinse the burette with the acid first and fill up the burette and clamp it on the retort stand. And after that, we're going to record how much of acid is in the burette. Now we are done. We have done setting up the acid alkaline. Let's the action begin. So the action is just, we're going to twist the knob here and let the acid gradually adding into the alkaline until end point is achieved. Since I'm using phenolphthalein, whenever it turns colorless means it's already become neutral. So that's the end point. And we're going to record how much of acid is being used and repeat the experiment for a few times to get the average of the acid that being used. And for the final time, we're going to repeat the experiment without any indicators. So once we are done, we're going to follow up by the HCF very difficult. So HCF very difficult, as we mentioned before, what we're going to do is we're going to heat up the mixtures until only one third of the solution is left so that it becomes saturated. And then we're going to let it cool down to room temperature so that the crystal can be formed. You can think of like C is cool down, C for crystal. Once the crystal is formed, we're going to filter the impurity by rinsing it with some of the distilled water. But since now it's wet, we're going to dry it by using the filter paper. We're going to squeeze the crystals against the filter paper to dry it off. And now you've learned how to prepare soluble salt that contains spa. Next up, we're going to learn how to prepare soluble salt that does not contain spa just like my only children don't go to spa. So my friend, HCF, very, very difficult. So how it works is first, we're going to prepare the metal first, filter, and then whatever HCF, very difficult, it's just a repeating process of whatever that we have learned just now. So first, we're going to set up the experiment looks like this, where we have the beaker of acid, we're going to heat it up until it's hot enough, then only we start to adding in our metal, metal oxide or metal carbonate, but remember, we must adding in excess. Why must be adding in excess is we want to make sure that all of the acid has been react completely. So we're going to add in more than enough of the metal oxide. But since we use metal oxide, metal oxide contains oxide and acid contains hydrogen ion. And what raw material will be based on what kind of salt that you want to prepare? So let's say if you want to prepare zinc chloride, as we know, Zinc chloride contains zinc and chloride ion. If I fill in the blank, I will have zinc oxide and hydrochloric acid. What if now I want to prepare lead 2 nitrate? Of course, lead 2 nitrate contains lead and nitrate ion. If I fill in the blank, I will have lead 2 oxide and nitric acid. And now you try and let me know. If I want to have prepare iron 2 sulfate, of course, I need to have the iron. 2 ion and sulfate ion. And if I fill in the blank, I will have iron oxide and sulfuric acid. Once we're done with mix up the metal and the acid, don't forget, 
we have excess of metals. So we're going to filter it out, those kind of the excessive metal powder first. Then only we take the mixtures to heat it up like usual to remove the water. Once we remove the water, it becomes saturated. We let it cool down to room temperatures so that the crystal can be formed. Once the crystal is formed, we're going to rinse it with the distilled water and dry it by using the filter paper. And now we're going to learn how to write it down in sentence. So first, we're going to mix up the metal with acid. So we're going to set up the experiment looks like this, but don't forget, prepare the acid first. So prepare the acid, how we're going to prepare the acid? We're going to pour in the acid into a beaker, heat up the acid by using the Bunsen burner. Once it's hot enough, we're going to adding in the metal, metal oxide or metal carbonate bit by bit by using spatula and stir it by using a grass rod. So if you're adding metal, so we can say adding the metal powder in excess by using spatula and stir it with grass rod. But if you use metal oxide, you're going to write down as a metal oxide. If you use metal carbonate, you're going to write down as a metal carbonate. But don't forget to be specific. Let's say if you're using zinc oxide, write down zinc oxide. If you're using the lead 2 oxide, write down lead 2 oxide. So once we are done, don't forget to write down that we're going to filter out the excessive metal, then only repeat the process of HCF really difficult. So HCF really difficult means heat it up until it becomes saturated, cool down to become the crystal, and then filter it by using the distilled water to rinse it off the impurity. And last, we're going to dry it by pressing against the filter paper. And now you're done. You have learned how to prepare soluble salt that does not contain spa as well. And last, we're going to learn how to prepare insoluble salt. For insoluble salt, how it works is we're going to prepare two soluble salts, mix it up so that it will form the insoluble salt and the byproduct is one of the soluble salt. So let's say if you want to prepare lead 2 chloride, as you know, if you want to cook an egg fried rice, of course, you need to have an egg and rice. So we need to have something that contains lead and chloride. So lead and chloride and whatever follow behind the lead or whatever is in front of the chloride is up to you but make sure that they are soluble. But the life hack is remember whatever end with nitrate is always soluble and whatever start with spa is always soluble. So you can use those kind of life hack to decide what kind of materials that you're going to use. So for now I'm going to use the life hack but then the main product is the lead 2 chloride. The byproduct is eventually our sodium nitrate. So there we go. We have the byproduct of sodium nitrate. And sodium nitrate is one of the soluble salt. What if now I want to prepare a barium sulfate? So again, something with barium and something with sulfate. And what follow behind is up to you. But if you want to be unique, maybe I can choose something like chloride because barium chloride is eventually soluble. And here I use the example of spa so the next step would be my potassium so i can have a potassium so again the main product is barium sulfate the byproduct is going to be the potassium chloride how about i want to prepare a calcium sulfate so something with calcium and something with sulfate first and fill in the blank so if i use the life hack i will choose nitrate and if i use the life hack i will choose spa spa so ammonium coming up the main product is the calcium sulfate, so the byproduct is going to be the ammonium nitrate. What if I want to prepare magnesium carbonate? We can try first and let me know. So something with magnesium and something with carbonate, but then the one at the back is decided by yourself. If I want to use sulfate, so I have magnesium sulfate, and if I want to use spa again, sodium, so I will have sodium carbonate. And again, the main product is the magnesium carbonate. My byproduct will be the sodium sulfate. And next up, what about I want to have zinc carbonate. So zinc carbonate, something with zinc, something with carbonate. And if I want to use the life hack, I will choose nitrate. And spa means this is a potassium. So again, the main product is a zinc carbonate. The byproduct is going to be the potassium nitrate. So now we have learned how to decide the raw materials Next, we're going to go step by step, which is the, my friend, really disgusting. Mix up the raw materials that we choose by pour the first materials into a beaker first and pour another materials into the second beakers. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up and use the grass rod to stir it. Once we stir it, what we see is 
there is a precipitate is formed. The precipitate is what we call it as our product, which is the insoluble salt that we want. When we're done with this one, we're going to filter out the soluble and insoluble salt because we want to separate the salt so that I will just get the insoluble salt that we want. And after that, we're going to rinse it to remove the impurity by using the distilled water. Since it's now wet, we're going to dry it by pressing against the filter pepper. Then we are done. So we have learned all the method to prepare soluble and insoluble salts. Let's have a recap. So for whoever that content spa, this HCF really difficult. For whoever that does not go to spa like my only children, then my friend, HCF really difficult. For the double decomposition method, what we're going to do is just my friend really, really disgusting because it has been decomposed for twice, so it's quite disgusting. So let me know in the comments, did you learn all of the steps? To prepare those kind of salts. Hey, if you have any questions or like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more video like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.